The second formula also is going to look at what happens when you borrow money and what's going to happen in the future, but it's different from the first one. The first one, you're putting deposits away and your money is growing. In this example, you're getting a loan. And this one is one that if you learn how to use this, you might go back and use this. I've used this app a lot of times whenever I have to buy a vehicle or whenever I'm thinking about buying something expensive like a house. This program, that TVM solver, is really helpful. And I'll show you some other examples after we're done this one. But here, you're buying $15,000 to buy a car. You can afford to pay $300 a month. How long is it going to take for you to pay it off if they have an annual interest rate of 6%? Well, that's what this formula does. And again, if you got this on an exam, they would explain what each of these things stand for. The pre-V, the present value, that's the present value of your loan. So you are borrowing $15,000. The R, just like the formula before, is how much your regular payments are. That's $300. Square bracket 1 minus 1 plus the interest rate per compounding period, 0 0.06 over 12 to the power of negative n divided by the interest rate per compounding period again. So just like before, we locate our power, which is right here in the little dotted green box. And algebraically, if we want to solve for n, we're going to need to isolate that first. So again, what are you, what's the opposite of dividing? You're going to multiply both sides by 0 0.06 over 12. That'll simplify these away. Take out your calculator, 15,000, multiply by 0 0.06 divided by 12 is 75. So we get 75 is equal to 300, 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the negative n. Divide both sides by 300. You get 0 0.25. And now those square brackets aren't needed, but I started it, so I may as well close it. In this case, I want to get the power by itself. Can you see that our power is minus or subtracted right now? So I'm going to add it to both sides to bring it to this side so that it's positive. Now, that doesn't change the exponent to positive because I've just added that to both sides. Exponent is still negative. I'm going to put the numbers on the other side, so I'd have to subtract the 0.25. And I would get. 0.75. And now that I have the power by itself, I can take the log of both sides. And when I take the log of this side, that exponent that was there can come out in front. So I'll have a negative n in front. And now to get n by itself, I would have to divide, divide by negative log 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12. Yeah? If I brought everything over to this side, but you see that I brought um, do it in green here. I brought this over to this side and this over to that side. So I went 1 minus 0.25 on the right to get the 0.75. And I brought that negative power to the left to make it a, a positive coefficient. So now I type that into my calculator. Alpha y equals log. 0.75 divided by a negative log 
1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12. And we get 57.68. So that means you would make 57 full payments of $300, and your last payment would be only a portion of that $300, which would be 0.68 of that $300. So if we wanted to write our sentence here, how many payments would we need? It would take us 58 payments, but the last payment wouldn't be the full $300. So you could store that, plug it back in to check to see if we're right, but this time we're going to check with our TVM solver to see if we're right. So again, I'm going to So again, our payments per year are 12, our compound periods per year are 12. The interest rate was 6%. We can afford to pay $300 a month, so our payment, because it's money coming out of our pocket, will be minus $300. The present value in this case, though, is $15,000 because the bank is giving you that money. You are getting a vehicle that's worth $15,000. The future value, when you're done paying it off, you won't owe the bank anything. So that'll be zero. Again, we want to solve for how much or how long is this going to take? How many payments are we going to need? So when we plug all of this into our TVM solver, six present value positive 15,000, payments are $300, future value is zero, we go to the one we want to solve for, alpha enter, 57.68, so we got the same answer as before. It's just set up, this, the, all the formulas that we've done are set up that way that the payments are done at the end of the month rather than the beginning of the month, but if you wanted to see what difference it would make if you had your payments right at the beginning of the month, okay? But then your present value would be immediately down 14700 So it would make your payments a little bit less. So now that we've done these two examples and the questions, I'll give you the question numbers for this one as well. This one is 7 and 12. Yes. What do we plug into the N? It just, whatever it was in there before, because I don't know what this is, right? So you could put a zero in there. You can't leave it blank because it'll say error, give you a problem. But whatever you're wanting to solve for, you could put a zero to begin with, or you could just leave whatever number was there. And then at the end, you go to the one you want to solve for and solve for it. So probably the first big purchase that you're going to make that you might have to pay interest on might be a vehicle. Okay? Maybe some of you are already, without knowing it, paying interest on a cell phone that you've got because you couldn't pay the whole thing at the beginning or they had some sort of plan to begin with. But the next major, major thing, oh, before we go into this, how much is this vehicle costing this person in the end? They're paying 57.68 times, and we can just go right in here, they're doing that times $300, right? Does that make sense? You can do math in these things too if you want, just to see, so you don't have to switch out. So that $15,000 vehicle, in the end is going to cost them $17,304. So 
So you're paying an extra 2300 in interest on that vehicle. So let's say you're shopping around, you see another dealership selling the same vehicle for $16,000. Most people would say, oh, the $15,000 is a better deal. But they have a special, their interest rate is, instead of 6%, they have like 1.9%. So it's quite a bit lower. Which is a better, the interest rate is a lot lower. Which is a better deal? Well, if you quickly plug it into here, this is the nice thing about this program, is you don't have to do all these calculations to compare things. I can just go alpha enter now. Oh, it would only take me 55.76 payments. So even though it was $1,000 more to begin with, in the end, when I times that by 300, it would cost less than the other vehicle. So I told you before about the power of interest rates. This shows a little bit of that. But our next examples that I'm going to go over right now, just using the calculator, show it even more. One of the biggest purchases you're going to make in your entire life will be buying a house. Yes? So how can I tell that like, the payment part should be positive or negative? Any time that you're putting money away, so you're taking it out of your wallet and giving it somewhere, like putting it into the bank or paying off a loan, that will always be negative. Whenever money is coming back to you, then it's going to be positive. So in the first example, the future value was $100,000 because at that moment, you were going to the bank, you were taking out that money and bringing it back to you. So if you're buying a house, the standard for buying a house is you pay for it over 25 years. It takes a long time to pay for a house. So you make monthly payments, so you go 25 times 12, you'll, you'll pay for the house over 300 payments. Currently, interest rates for a house are probably around 3%, which is pretty good. Okay. What does an average house sell for in Winnipeg, an average small starter home right now? probably around $300,000. It's quite expensive. It's gone up quite a bit. So $300,000 home. What this program also can find out for you, and one thing that's interesting about mortgages, in the end, you want your future value to be zero. Okay? Mortgages, by law, can only compound interest twice a year. But we saw that that doesn't make a huge difference the compounding periods, it really was the interest rate that made a huge difference. So if this was all true, we can go to payment and the program can quickly solve for this. We don't have a formula, we haven't looked at a formula that does this, but now we can say if you want that house, you would have to pay $1,420 a month for 25 years and then that house would be completely yours. So how much does a $300,000 house cost? Well, if I take that 1419, whoops, and I multiplied that by 300 payments, you're going to pay 425, almost 426 thousand dollars for that for that house. Okay, so you end up giving the bank an extra 126 thousand dollars in interest. I'm going to write that number down roughly. So, 3%, it would cost you $426,000 to buy that house. Now, one of the things that I want you to do for homework is go home, ask your parents, ask your grandparents, what are the interest rates they've paid for their house? What's the highest one they can remember? What's the lowest one that they can remember? Okay? Figure out, figure out what interest rates they're paying. Because in the 1980s, interest rates in Canada skyrocketed. So at some times, if you went to the bank, in the 1980s, the best interest rate you might be able to find would be 18%. Ooh. 
which is really, really high. If we look at this same house, instead of paying $1,400 a month, I go alpha and solve, you'd be paying $4,400 a month. And that house, after 25 years, if that stayed, $1.3 million. Something like that. Wow. That is a huge difference. Okay? So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you went from paying $426,000 for your house, which is reasonable because a house is something that appreciates, which means that it goes up in value. So that $300,000 house, even though you spent $426,000 on it, in 25 years, it's probably going to be worth at least that amount. So it is a good investment to make, even though you're paying interest for it. 1.3 million, when interest rates went to 18%, a lot of people said, we can no longer afford to pay for our house. So they put their houses up for sale, and as a result, housing prices went down because everybody's trying to sell, and it wasn't a very happy time. Okay? Now, Again, one of the things that I want you to take from this class and from an understanding of interest rates, because I truly believe if you understand interest rates and you think about it and know how they work, you can save anywhere from twenty to $100,000 compared to the average person. The average person who doesn't pay attention to how interest rates work, they're, they're paying and they don't even know the, the extra that they're paying. So we started with 3%. When you're making your mortgage, take the time to really research and find the best percentage rate you can. Because if you can even save, like, oh, I found somewhere else that'll offer us 2.5, what kind of difference does that make? Well, we can see our monthly payments at 2.5. Well, that's at 1343. And now if I times that by 300, just spending an extra day finding a half a percent interest will save you over $20,000. That's quite a lot of money. And it's only a half percent. So hopefully, the person that's trying to sell you the interest rate, maybe they don't know interest rates very well. And if you can convince them, oh, it's only a half. What's the big deal, right? <laughs> Right? You can save $20,000. And the other thing that people don't realize is because when you buy your house, usually it's right at the beginning of your career in whatever career you decide. And that means that it's right at the point where you're making the least amount of money in your career. Five years later, you'll move up the ladder or you get years of seniority or something. You will, your paycheck will be bigger five years from when you started than when you started. And a lot of jobs have increments like that where you go up every year. So what some people do is like we're making more money so that means we can go to the movies more, go out for supper more, go on more trips and if that's what you'd like to do that's great but if you instead of deciding to just entertain yourself more what would happen if you took that extra money and put it against your house? How much money could you save? So you were paying around $1,400 a month. Let's say you make enough money, you can say, hey, now we can afford $1,800 a month, $400 a month more. What effect would that have? So instead of paying $1,400, I'm going to put in $1,800 here. And again, this is what's really nice about this program. You can play through different scenarios very quickly. Well, that means instead of having to make 300 payments to pay off this house, if I go alpha solve, it's only going to take 204 payments, 100 payments less. That's like eight years. Okay? And if we look at how much this house is costing us now by putting that little bit extra away every month, 204.68, then
there's another $32,000 you've saved. So you argued for that half a percent, then you decided to put more money against your mortgage, and you're already at $50,000 saved. By saving that $50,000, when your mortgage is paid off, you can go on a lot of trips. <laughs> yep. How to save money. Well, we're not really, you're, you're not scamming, you're, you're just, you're just trying the best that you can to save money. All right. 